Hello, everyone, and welcome to the July edition of ServeNow EDU. I'm Trent Carlisle, co founder of Logical, the parent company of ServeNow and Serve Manager, as well as PINAP. Today's topic is one that you're going to find extremely interesting and relevant, regardless uh, if you're a process server uh, or a private investigator. Uh, Joseph Jones is our guest today, and he'll be he'll be discussing social media investigations from the perspective of a process server. Uh, I'll introduce Joe momentarily. Uh, as a reminder, these webinars are recorded, so you can watch this one and past ServeNow EDUs on ServeNow.com, YouTube, and you can also subscribe in iTunes. This is sort of a uh, part one in a two-part series on social media investigations. Next month, uh, on August 25th, J.J. Uh, Gilburn, investigator with the Lawrence County, uh, Missouri Sheriff's Office, will be our guest. And the title of his webinar is Computer Investigations and Use of Social Media. Uh, so make sure you go to Serve Now and register for that one. As I mentioned, today's guest is Joe Jones, Vice President of Bosco Legal. Joe is a licensed private investigator in the state of California and has certifications in open source intelligence. Joe's father started Bosco in 1980. He grew up in the family business and now runs the, uh, uh, the firm with his brothers. Uh, Joseph has a degree in psychology from California Southern University, is a member of the California Association of Licensed Private Investigators the California Association of Legal Support Professionals and the National Association of Professional Process Servers, as well as the National Council of Investigative Investigation and Security Services, uh, and has received specialized training from the military, various law enforcement agencies, and the nation's top private intelligence firms. Uh, Joe is also a CalSpro certified process server and has served on multiple committees within that organization. Uh, did I miss anything there on that bio there, Joe? No, I'm thinking we might need to shorten that up a little bit next time. I think we could keep going now. Yeah. Uh, so in regards to Bosco, um, before we get started on the content of this presentation, is there uh, anything that you'd like to tell us about uh, in relation to the services that you offer related to the content today, why you decided to offer that? Um, yeah, I'll, I'll speak to it for a quick second. So we, we offer, you know, various attorney services, uh, process serving, court filings, records retrieval, but we also do a, a lot of investigations. And I, I am specifically over our process serving and investigations divisions. Um, and, you know, social media, the reason I wanted to do this one is social media has become such a, a huge part of our business. Um, both in on both sides for the process serving in the investigations, and we'll get some more into it. You know, most of our clients are law firms, um, but we also do some work, you know, for other process servers or private investigators who don't have the time or know how to, to deal with some of these, you know, kind of specialized areas. Awesome. Well, we have a lot of folks here today. Uh, we had uh, almost 100 registered, and I think it's a topic that everyone is going to appreciate and find very interesting, whether it's just for general knowledge related to skip tracing or maybe uh, you want to offer this service directly to your clients or even refer that business to uh, an expert in the field. I'll let everyone know that you can certainly ask questions along the way. Joe will be sharing his screen and uh, he will be presenting the content. I will be monitoring all the questions that are in Go to webinar. So, if you have a question along the way, please feel free to uh, ask a question in that questions widget and go to webinar. Uh, again, if you've been to a ServeNow EDU uh, webinar in the past, this will be recorded. We'll try to shoot you a link, hopefully by tomorrow, with the recorded content, screen grabs, you know, any links to pertinent information, etc. So, don't feel like you need to. Uh, hastily take notes and, and get everything down that will be avail available to you hopefully in the next 24 hours or so. So with that said, um, Joe, I'm going to go ahead and, and turn it over to you. Okay, awesome. So we're going to go through, uh, do, we, do we have my screen up so everybody can see it? 
I see it, yeah. Okay, perfect. So we're going to go through um, a lot of different things. Some of the stuff that we're going to be getting to, into may not apply to everybody, but certainly, you know, as we go through this, you're going to learn a lot of things that will hopefully, you know, ha help you in what you're doing. Uh, so the the first thing that we're going to go over is talking about deep web searches and how to conduct them. Um, as a preface to that, especially if you're working on the investigation side, one thing that you need to understand is that your internet browser grabs everything that you do. You know, especially if you're using Google, which you should be, it tracks everything, everything that you're doing. So when you're working on investigations, you're going to want to start with a clean browser that doesn't have all of your previous searches in there. I mean, doesn't have a lot of uh, a lot of the, the stuff about your personal um, information. So, so the first thing I'm going to uh, recommend doing is if you're using um, something for investigations, you have a separate browser that you use. Um, so if your normal browser is Internet Explorer, download Chrome and use that just for your investigations or Firefox or, or, or whatever you're going to use. Uh, and then once you get that new account established, you want to establish it with a, a different uh, a new email address which it takes two seconds to create um, and then we're going to go in and we're going to adjust some of our settings um, on on your uh, on your new search so to, to get there you just go up here at google slash preferences uh, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to turn off the safe search um, now this is something that you know on my personal computers I always have safe search on because I don't popping up um, but when we're talking about investigations you know a lot of time we're dealing in, with the underbelly of society and so we need to be able to access anything um, regardless of whether or not it's it's safe um, so that's the first thing we're going to do we're going to turn off safe search um, then we're going to change it so it says never show instant results um, that that's a simple thing that we do because it makes it easier to find exactly what you're looking for when Google isn't trying to auto populate and tell you hey this is what you should be searching for. Uh, the other thing we're going to do is we're going to change our results to show 100 um, results per page. And that's just going to make it easier as you're scrolling through. Um, and then the other, let's see, the other thing that we're going to want to do um, is if if you're able to, some browsers allow it, some browsers don't, but if possible you're going to want to turn off location-based searching. One thing you may not understand is Google always knows where you're at um, and it will filter the searches that you do based on where you're searching from. So my, my office here is in Riverside, uh, California. If I'm searching for, you know, Joe's Pizza, it's going to look for Joe's Pizza in Riverside even if I don't tell it Riverside. So if you, if you can find a way to turn that off, that's, that's great. Um, so the next thing we're going to talk about doing is Boolean searching. Um, so the, you know, as you know, the internet, and we'll do a quick search here, um, we'll go to Google, um, Google's going to give you as much as it can. So we're going to search for me real quick, we're going to say Joseph Jones, um, private investigator. Alright, and so when we search that, we're going to go up here to the top and we're going to see that in less than a second it gave me um, almost a million and a half results. Um, now, you as the investigator, you as the process server trying to track somebody down, you don't have the time or inclination to search through a million and a half results. Uh, so one of, one of the, the things that we do that is quite effective is we're going to use quote, quotations. So when you'll see what I'm doing here is I'm putting in quotes the terms that I specifically want to search for, and we're going to do a little plus sign here. Um, so right now what I'm doing is I'm telling Google that I only want to see the term Joseph Jones in quotes, so is, is one, you know, term, um, and I want to see private investigator as one term. So doing that just dropped me down from a million and a half to 1,370. Um, so now I've got a little bit more manageable um, term to work with um, and, and some 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 other things that we can do um, here is then we'll, I'm going to show you if we replace this plus with an asterisk. So I guess for, first before I jump into that, I'll tell you that this will find anything on a web page where it has the term Joseph Jones 
and where it has the term private investigator um, anywhere on the page. So this next thing we're going to do is we're going to put an asterisk there instead and that is going to filter us down to eight results. Um, so now I've gone through the entire web, all million and a half different results that could be associated and, and boiled it down to um, exactly what I'm looking for. So here, you know, there's my LinkedIn profile, uh, some blog posts that I've done, my listing on Cal's Pro, um, some different speaking engagements I've done. So, so now we have exactly what you're looking for. You know, and Joseph Jones is like one of the most common names in the United States, right? So using those simple key terms, we've been able to find exactly me. Uh, so, so this is totally invaluable. There's, there's a lot of training. Um, I've been to, you know, days and days of training just on the Boolean search logic, uh, which you can Google and you can find lots of good stuff. But these, these ones that I showed you right here are really the ones that I use the most and I found, find most effective. So once you put something in quotes, that's going to make sure that whatever it's, you know, that it's only looking for that specific term. Um, all right, so the, the next thing we're going to jump into now is um, how, to, how to locate social media accounts for people that you're looking for. So say you've got a skip trace that you're, you know, that, that's come through your door and you're trying to you know, track down this person, get some photos um, to help you with your surveillance or stakeout or whatever you're doing. Um, really, really the place that is best to start um, is with a database. Um, you know, databases are great because they can provide us a whole lot of information in a short period of time for not a lot of money. You know, for, you know, two to, you know, 20 bucks, you can aggregate all kinds of information on somebody that might take you, you know, hours doing these kinds of, you know, Boolean searches to locate. Um, so, you know, I won't go into databases too much, um, but the, the things the, you know, kind of our favorites are uh, TLO, IRB, IDI Core. There's a whole bunch, you know, out there that you can, that you can use, but those are a few that, you know, that you might want to look into. Uh, and the, the key with those is we're talking about locating social media accounts isn't necessarily that they will find the accounts for you because my experience has been that none of them are very good at locating social media accounts, but it'll give you leads in order to track those down, typically by way of you know possible phone numbers and possible email addresses. Um, so I'm going to show you a, a quick tool um, that that I love um, that we, we use to um, locate people's Facebook accounts. Um, so and this this works really well as a phone reverse uh, search. So I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna pull up my phone here. I had some some really weird person call me and leave me a leave me a message earlier today. So I'm gonna punch in their phone number here and see who it belongs to. So right up here in the Facebook search bar, um, we're just gonna go type in the number and see what pops up. Oh, hey Trent, how are you doing? Um, so here here's what we've got. When we punch it in. Um, it's going to show us that that phone number that we just punched in is associated with this individual's profile, which in this case our uh, our creeper is Trent. The uh, and one thing that's really cool about the way this tool works is his phone number isn't public. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to show you. So we're we go in. We're going to look at uh, contact information, and he certainly has all of his you know work stuff here. But you're not going to see his phone number here because his phone number isn't public, but Facebook has indexed that so that we can search it. Um, so that's a really, really great tool. Um, if you're trying to find somebody's uh, account, especially if they've got a common name, you know, if you just punch it in, you could, you could spend, you know, hours sorting through, you know, potential hits. Um, whereas that, that, that's, that's pretty quick and it's free. Um, use it all the time. We've had, you know, several times. Anytime we get a, a threatening call from somebody, um, you know, a case that we're working on, somebody's made a threat. That's one of the first things I do because if we get a hit with it, if they have a Facebook and it's linked to their cell phone, I can immediately send a picture to my client. And say, hey, do you know who this person is? You know, and, and we can we can start our start our investigation there. Um, another thing that we do when we're trying to locate accounts. 
Um, so, so Facebook, you know, we, we've got a lot of different ways to search, which we'll get more into, you know, some of those search methods with Facebook later. But one of the things that we've learned is that when it comes to social media accounts, people will typically have the same username across multiple platforms, right? So, you know, if, if you're, you know, uh, you know, Hotty girl 22 on Facebook, you're probably going to have the same on Twitter, on Instagram, on Reddit, whatever you're using. So what we do um, is once we've found one account, so we've got facebook.com slash Trent Carlisle. So up here you can see this is Trent's username. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to copy that and we're going to go back into our browser. I'm going I to... That. I use that because hotty girl 22 is taken. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know. Trent, uh, Trent, that was his first pick. Um, all right, so we're going to put in the the username exactly how we found it, and then we're going to put our quotes around it because we're not interested in anything else except for that at this point. So I'm going to hit Trent Carlisle just like that. So the first thing that pops up here is uh, Trent's Twitter. Um, we also have a few uh, few posts there. Um, we've got some an Instagram account. We we do have an orthopedic surgeon from Texas who happens to you know on this doctor's platform use the same username. Um, but as we scroll through here, we find all kinds of different links to Trent, and most of them, because of the unique username, are going to be for him already confirmed. We don't have to sort through every single you know. Trent Carlisle in the in the United States, uh, so so that is a that's a really um, a really solid tool. Uh, and I'll say another the, thing: the images that pulled up are pretty timely because there was a picture in there that must have been from my Instagram. But a couple of the girls in the office and I we went to a uh, SEO talk last week, and I think I took an Instagram picture of it. Well, actually, so that, that looks like Kelsey had me tagged in that, maybe. But this was like a week ago. So, that I mean, that's a pretty timely result when you're looking at the Google image search, search stuff. Yeah, definitely. And that, that that's the thing that, um, you know, databases aren't going to get you, right? Like, there's no way for a database to aggregate all the information and to make it real time. Whereas, you know, searching directly with Google is, you know, very, very much, very much real time. Um, all right. So the the other thing that we're going to uh, talk about on locating um, accounts is going to have to do with once you locate one account, you're going to go through and uh, scour the account to see what kind of other you know information you can find. You know, typically one of the first places we go if we're having a hard time um, finding somebody's accounts you know, whether they have a common name or they have a lot of security stuff um, set up, is we're going to go through, we're going to go to their friends, um, and we're going to find, you know, whatever friends um, that has maybe an unusual name. So uh, so this one right here, you know, Pam Troxel. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in, I'm going to find other accounts for Pam Tro Troxel on, you know, Twitter, Instagram, Reddit, you know, wh whatever platforms we're looking at, find her account and then look at her friends and see if I can find Trent as one of her friends or contacts or whatever you're going to call it on that platform. Um, so that's a really great way to, you know, to locate accounts for people, especially when you're, um, you know, have, having a hard time and can't find them with, with some more of the, uh, the basic, uh, basic stuff. You know, another thing that we'll, we'll touch on next um, has to do with going through and reading the comments to be able to establish family relationships and how they tie into um, to their friends and whatnot. Um, all right, so now now we're the, the next section that we're going to talk about here is how to find non-public information. Um, okay, before, we, before we get too far, sorry, I have to take a, a breath for a second, but there were a couple questions, or kind of the same question back in the. Uh, first section there uh, that we talked about where we're just looking at the quotes in search, uh, the plus and the asterisk. Uh, a couple of people asked what the differentiator was between the plus and the asterisk. And from, I guess from what I know is that Google will 
take a look at you know what you have in quotes um, and then the asterisk will tell it to find the pages that um, have what you have in quotes and then followed by in that same followed by in that same page um, so I guess if you put uh, if you did uh, Joseph Jones asterisk private investigator it wouldn't find pages that had private investigator before Joseph Jones and is that accurate or do you have a different yeah, so, so it, it's pretty simple. So the, the plus sign is going to mean I want those two terms on the same page. Um, the asterisk means I want those two terms on the same page within 15 words of each other. Um, so, you know, so for example, in, in this case it was relevant because there could be lots of news articles for like the, you know, there, there's lots of famous people with the name Joseph Jones where it could have, you know, a, a different, you know, private investigator reference there. Whereas with that asterisk, it's saying, I want these two terms within 15 words of each other. Uh, so so it, it makes it, you know, more of a, a concrete hit that's going to be something you're interested in reading. Yeah. And then we have another question about um, Facebook. Can the person in Facebook track who's looking at their profile? So there, there, you, there, used to be, there used to be apps, and my understanding is that there's currently no way. Um, however, if you are continually looking at somebody's Facebook page, it is going to alert them that you might be somebody that they know. Um, so I definitely recommend you don't do any kind of social media investigations or, you know, even if we're not talking a deep investigation like a locate, using your own personal account. It's a bad idea. So even though they might not be able to, you know, have an app that will show me, you know, hey, this person has viewed it so many times, um, it, it, could certainly, it could certainly pop up. And one of the things about social media is these platforms, they change constantly. So while right now there's not an app that can do it, that doesn't mean tomorrow somebody's not going to develop an app that can do it. Yeah, the only one that I'm familiar with that kind of tells you who's looking at your profile um, is LinkedIn. But they, they build that in on purpose because they want to kind of tease you to uh, signing up for their premium uh, subscription there. Right. Cool. Well, and that that actually leads right into kind of my next um, my next section about was it was that all the questions? Uh, for now, yeah, you got them all. Okay. So that leads me right into my next uh, my next se section about how to find non-public information. Uh, so one of the one of the first things you're going to want to do um, is create a decoy account. Right, so this is going to be, you know, you're going to want one for each platform, but this is going to be social media profile that has none of your personal information, is not tied to your email address, is, is untraceable back to you. Um, and this is important for, for a few reasons. I mean, obviously, the first is you don't want people having your personal information, you know, if, if somehow they're able to. But if you're sending out friend requests and things like that, you can, you, know, you can have an alter ego to use. Um, now, before you go create a, you know, a decoy account and start friending people, you've got you've to make sure that you understand a couple things. Um, first, depending on this person's involvement with the case, you might not be able to legally send them a friend request. Uh, so if somebody is represented by an attorney and involved in a legal case, um, you can't reach out to them um, in any way, shape, or form um, to try and establish content, uh, contact. Um, and while there's no real precedent set, um, yet there's quite a bit of opinions that have been written by you know, different bar associations and things that essentially say, yeah, you can't do that. Um, so, so before you create a decoy account um, and start using it, you've got to understand that. The other thing is if you're using um, fake photos on your decoy accounts, you've got to make sure that those photos weren't taken in the United States. Uh, there has been, you know, and, it, and it's mostly just talk. I've never heard of anybody actually get, getting prosecuted, 
but there has been talk about if you use somebody else's um, image that they've put on the internet and used it as your own, that could be tantamount to identity theft. Uh, you know, whereas people outside the United States really would have no you know recourse if that happened. You know, I, I, again, it, it really probably isn't a big deal, but something to at least consider. Um, and you know, we have a lot of different decoy accounts that do different things. So, so in this in this case, I switched to one of my um, one of my female accounts that we use. Um, you know, this this particular one um, is we I don't I don't use a whole lot, um, but we do have kind of an established timeline here where we've got some posts and things that we've done. Um, we get some some friends established, so when we send out you know those requests, that we've got some um, you know we, we've got some back history on our account, so it doesn't look like we're coming you know coming out of left field. Another tip, as far as this is concerned, is if you have a target subject that you're trying to friend request, so let, let's say we've got a complaint that you're trying to serve and you're trying to get some more information out of their social media, and that person likely isn't represented by counsel. So you're probably okay to send them some kind of a, a friend request because they don't have any protections. Um, but you go through their account, you see, all right, this person, you know, they were born in LA, they went to UCLA, they, you know, have they like these bands, whatever. So you can go through your account and you can change your personal information to be the same as theirs. You know, I live in LA, I went to UCLA, you know, we like the same bands. So when you send that friend request and they give your profile a quick look, you know, they, they think, oh, I must know this person. Uh, you know, I'll go ahead and accept them. Um, certainly it doesn't work all the time, but it works a heck of a lot of the time. Now the other thing to, to do when you are doing that is you can, before you friend them, you can go and find out who some of their friends are and do the same thing with their friend. So that way you have, um, you know, when, when they send their friend request, it'll show, oh, you, you're already friends with three of the same people, which increases your probability that they're going to accept that friend request. Uh, now another thing to keep in mind as far as that's concerned, if you've got a subject that you can't, um, send you know a friend request to. Um, one thing to keep in mind is that you are not barred from making friends with their friends. And a lot of times, friends of friends have a little bit deeper level of access than you know just somebody off of the street. So an another thing to uh, to keep in mind there. Um, all right, so. Uh, decoy accounts, we're being careful. Okay, so now there is a really cool tool that I'm going to teach you guys about. I'm not going to show you the tool because the guy who came up with it, um, he put a lot of work into it and I want you to go to his website. Um, so this this is the website, Intel Techniques, this tool we're going to use, it is it is free um, that he'll give to you if you you know do, do a training with him and sign up for his thing. Um, it's a very, very neat tool. Here's the website. Um, if you are interested in, you know, learning more about open source searching, which is what um, OSINT stands for, um, and, you know, other social media type stuff, you know, he's got some really great trainings available. Um, it's pretty reasonable if you're, you know, going to be doing them pretty, pretty often. Um, so this is his website you can go through. Um, but basically what this tool does is it allows us to search within Facebook um, for uh, for things that are aren't necessarily tagged as private, but that don't show up on their information. So I found um, I found this individual's Facebook profile as an example. I have no idea who she is. She's not tied to any of um, any of my investigations. So I thought it'd be a, a good good example. Um, so this is you know Karen. And let's say we're trying to track Karen down. We're trying to learn more about her. We want to, you know, serve her. We want to do some surveillance on her. So we find her Facebook profile here. We're going to scroll through here. And there's really, as we go through, you know, there's a post from January where she was posting about, you know, chicken. Um, and then everything else is like from 2013. You know, there's really not a whole lot of usable information on here. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to use this tool, um, which if you go and you, if you do uh, um, Michael's trainings, um, he teaches you how to do some of it and gives you some shortcuts. So we're going to use 
this tool to search within Facebook to find other stuff you know that isn't on her profile so the first thing that we're gonna do here is we're going to look for uh, photos that she has been tagged in so I guess here here first I'll show you what is you know on her profile this is um, this is really the the only photo here um, that's of any use so I'm gonna do photos of tagged so we're gonna drag we're gonna drag this screen over here now so I, I used this tool and so now I have more photos that she didn't post but somebody else posted and tagged her in so this one we already know about um, this one is especially interesting because we see Karen in this photo but it was posted by Ashworth Vision Clinic where she was tagged in so now we so now we have two things one we have another picture of her to help us with their surveillance and let's say you know her original you know photo was of a cat so we still know what she looks like but using this tool we now have this photo where we've got a photo of her and what does this look this looks like a Christmas card from a business that was posted by Ashworth Vision Clinic. So now we have a really good lead that uh, Karen probably works at the Ashworth Vision Clinic. Uh, now we'll go uh, kind of to this next one here uh, and see. All right, so we got she was tagged in it as a you know as one of these little girls. Obviously, she's not the little girl. But these are likely granddaughters or, or something along those lines. Um, so we're going to close that, and then the last one I'll show you here um, is is kind of cool because we when we go and we look at it, you know that's obviously not her, but she says this is for you, mom, um, and then tags Karen uh, in in that post. So we know now that this is Karen's daughter. Um, so if we're you know if we're, we're trying to track her down, you know now we know who her daughter is. We can use that as another lead. Uh, to, to aid us in our investigation. Uh, let's see, the next thing we're going to do here, um, photo comments. So this is, this is a, another really neat one. We'll drag this. So this is going to be any photos that Karen has um, commented on, on Facebook, on other people's pages. So this will not show up anywhere on her timeline. Um, but it's going to scour all of Facebook anytime she's made a comment, um, which can be very invaluable when you're you're trying to learn you know more information about a subject. Um, you know we can go through. I, I guess frankly we could go through and we could let me close that nastiness. One of one of the one of the things you have to be aware of. You know a lot of times when you're doing investigations, you're dealing with the underbelly of society, and because of that, you're spending all your time looking at their pages. You're going to get ads for all kinds of nasty stuff um, because. It, it thinks that's the kind of kind of person. That so, anyways, little little tip there. Um, the all right. So this one we can go through and click on this, and we can see. All right, this one says great picture. We don't care um, that she thinks it was a great picture. Let me bring that thing. I just closed it. Photo. Let's see. And there is there is one here that I wanted to show you guys that I found. Uh, let's see if I have it. All right, so I, I won't I won't go through and find it. But as I was scrolling through these in preparation for this, I found one of these photos. She had made a comment to somebody, "Hey, on one of their photos, hey, you know, great photo. I can't wait to see you next week when I come and visit." So if you're doing like so in that circumstance, if you're trying to track somebody down to get them served or to do surveillance, and you're having a heck of a time figuring out where they're at. You can you you know you could now use that to maybe track down that person you know show up at their house to get you know surveillance done uh, or getting getting documents served. We've used we've used that hundreds of times you know as we're dealing with you know evasive people. We won't you know sit on their house for 20 hours. We'll just figure out you know where they go to church, where they go to their you know association meetings, where their you know kids play soccer. Um, so there's 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 a wealth of wealth of information there. Um, and then the last thing that I'll show you that is really neat display. Uh, all right, so this one's pretty neat because this one will help you learn a lot about people. So this is going to be photos that have been liked by Karen. 
Um, so Karen has gone through, she's read one of these things, and she said, wow, that's something that, you know, I, I like. So in this one, you know, she put a thing about the Bible, so she's obviously religious. Um, like if you think, let's see, oh yeah, so she, so, so she really likes Bush, she doesn't like Obama. You know, so you can go through and learn tons and tons about people based on, you know, this, which wouldn't show up anywhere else um, if, you were, if you were searching for it. And, you know, and this, this is going to be especially useful if you're doing an actual social media investigation where you're trying to establish, you know, what their character is, what kinds of things they're involved with. Um, so it can, it can be really an, an invaluable tool. Um, is there, has there been any, any questions on that portion? Um, there is. Um, I will ask the question, but I'll first say that we'll include a link to the IntelTechniques.com website. Um, definitely encourage you all to, to check out what they have to offer. Joe showed me um, real time the other day when we were kind of doing a run through um, pretty much everything that he showed you guys. I saw the interface and kind of how, how it works and just how quickly you can pull up all these things that Joe referenced, photos they're tagged in, photos they comment on. I think that's when we came across that photo of uh, a gal had taken a picture of herself and the subject here responded and said, oh, I'll see you in a couple weeks, whatever. So really, really powerful stuff. Um, but uh, the question is, and I think it sort of relates to what you, what you just walked us through, but the question is, uh, any suggestions for a profile that is locked down, I'm assuming, you know, as, as private as you can make it on, on Facebook, where you can't see any data. Does, does a tool like this help out with that? Um, so if, if, we're try, if you're trying to secure your own account? Well, no. Um, they're looking for a person who's pretty much made everything private on Facebook. You know, can't, maybe can't be tagged in photos. Yeah. Yeah. Or, yeah. So, so th this is the tool you want. Because what, what the person, when they set their security settings, what they can control is what um, what they post goes out there. So you can say, you know, I'm posting this photo, but I don't want anybody to see it. But you can't control what other people are posting, you know, and tagging you on. Um, you know, there, I guess there is a way to do it, but you have to be super hyper vigilant with it. Um, and most people, most people don't. Um, and also, you know, things like you know, commenting on posts and you know. Uh, Liking things that those those settings, as far as I'm aware, people can't you know stop that becoming public information because it's not stored on their account; it's stored on the other person's account. So the only way to get rid of that is to delete your account. So this so this tool is perfect for for that. Yeah, that's the only uh, that was the only question. So okay. Great. You know, and it's important to recognize anytime you're dealing in, in one of these kinds of cases, you know, when you're, when you're doing the social media, there is no one-size-fits-all solution and there's nothing that works, you know, 100% of the time. Um, and part of one of the reasons we've become, you know, very well known for what we do is because we've been doing it so long and we've learned all kind of the ins and outs and there's about 100 different things you can do. But you know, in a forty-five minute session, this is the this is the best tool that I can give you for for that kind of thing. Right. Um, all right. So we've got we've got just a few minutes uh, left here. So what I'm gonna what I'm gonna talk about now um, deals in social media actual social media investigations. So a lot of what we've talked about here can be utilized. You know, for a lot of different purposes. You know, trying to track somebody down, just trying to generate some leads for you know your locate, your surveillance, whatever. Uh, but when you're talking about a social media investigation, which I'm going to define that as something where you're looking for content relevant to a case that you're going to send to an attorney, there there's a lot more that you need to do than just finding something and you know printing it off of the internet or you know sending them a link to. Uh, when, when we're working on investigations and we do, you know, surveillance is something we do a fair amount of, but we're, one of the things that we've found that has been um, a lot better for our clients is 
doing social media investigations where instead of you know going in doing a hundred hours of surveillance to you know watch them you know doing jumping jacks in the front yard we're going to go onto their social media accounts and find where they're posting you know themselves going out and doing the jumping jacks in the in the, in the front yard uh, and we find it super um, efficient because a it's a lot less time so it, it allows our clients to do more investigation when they usually might not have the budget for a lot of surveillance and we're able to access information that they otherwise wouldn't be able to get you know surveillance is not going to tell you you know what the person had for breakfast but their social media accounts probably are you know not that we even care about what they're eating for breakfast but 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 you get the idea so so the the key is when you're doing social media investigations a you have to learn how to find the information um it, there it's it's not it's not always simple you know sometimes you know if you have a profile like Trent's where he has everything public you know may, maybe it's going to be easy um, but you've got to you've got to learn the techniques to to really get in and find everything that's out there um, the other thing is you have to extract the metadata out of those posts so you can prove who when where um, and why you know so I could I could for anybody attending the seminar I could in five minutes create a profile that looks like it's your profile and I could start making terrorist threats on um, and then you know then that's gonna create you know a problem for you right because the, the you know FBI or whoever it is they're gonna start tracking it down but one of the things that they're gonna do is they're gonna look you know who created that account when they create it and that's where the metadata comes into play and so if you jump the gun and say hey look at all this we found then you can't really prove you know who posted it and it's it's, it's it's a lot more in depth than that, but but it gives you you know an idea of why you've got to pull out the the metadata. Um, also, it's very easy for somebody to delete a post. Um, so if you just have a print screen of something and you know you try to present that as evidence in court, then you're going to come up with a piece of paper, and then they could say, well, who posted that? When did they post it? Can you prove it wasn't photoshopped? Um, you know, we, let's go online right now and look at it. Well, I don't see it there. You know, who made that up? Um, whereas when you're, you know, extracting the metadata and forensically preserving those, then you're going to be able to, you know, actually use it in court. Um, there's, you know, there, we don't have enough time to go into that right now. You know, kind of to all the facets of how that how that works. Um, there's a lot of softwares out there. There's a lot of methods that you can do um, to to do that. But keep in mind, all of these things are, are really expensive. So unless you're ready to, you know, become certified and you know pay pay for you know thousands of dollars for training and databases, uh, it, it might be best, you know, to to tell the the client, hey, I found something that looks, you know, like it might be relevant to your case, but you're going to need an expert to go in and, and grab it all. And that, that is something that, that we can do to help. Like I said, most of our, um, most of our clients are law firms, um, but we, we do work with other investigators, other um, process servers who, who need help in this area and don't have the times, the means, or the knowledge to, you know, to do these kind of things them, themselves. Um, I guess one last thing that probably should have gone in the other, the other uh, section, but there is, contrary to you know, popular belief, there is no way, at least that I know of, and I've done a heck of a lot of training and spent a lot of time um, doing it, there's no way to find posts that have been deleted. Um, thing is gone from a social media profile, it's gone, unless you have already forensically preserved it. Um, there are some methods that, that we use if we think somebody has a pri high probability of deleting stuff um, to, to grab it real time as they as they post it uh, but but once it's gone it's gone so you know unless you have active monitoring on somebody's account which we do on our cases you know if, if we're if we have a case going we'll, we'll leave you know active monitoring I just had one actually like like last week where the the person posted something um, while we were in the middle of our investigation that was absolutely detrimental to their case they deleted it about two minutes later but because we had Active collection up, we grabbed it as soon as they posted it, um, and so now they're now they're going to pay you know dearly for that. Uh, but there's no way you know if I had just seen it and then said oh I should go grab that you know and then come back an hour later and it was gone we would have we would have been out of luck. Um, 
so any, anyways, that's I, I think we're at, we're we're at about the the forty five minute mark now. So I don't know. Was there any any, any other questions on that? Uh, I don't see any questions right now, but we'll uh, start to wrap it up. And if any questions come through, I'll definitely take a look at those. Um, but I want to thank you, Joe. I think this is a good place to stop. Uh, I think this has been very valuable, especially in the context of uh, I'm a process server. I'm looking for a little bit more intel. I want to be more efficient in my job. I want to be smarter versus just sitting out there and waiting hours and hours and hours for the subject to show up. Uh, there's so much information you can you know, get about what people do, where they go, what their patterns are, where they work, who they're friends with. Um, major advantages there, um, you know, for service of process, investigations, et cetera. If you want to take it to the next level, uh, certainly look at some of the resources that Joe is providing us and uh, contact him as well. And Joe, you want to go ahead and give out your email if uh, people want to get a hold of you? Yeah, yeah. So it's just Joe at BoscoLegal.org. Um, I'm sure Trent can put it with the with the materials at the end. Um, certainly, you know, if you if you're getting stuck on something and you have a question, I'd be you know happy to help. Um, if you're um, trying to you know get deeper into this on your own, let me know. We can give you some resources. Uh, or if you're looking to outsource this kind of work to somebody else, we could we could certainly help with that as well. Joe, yeah, this has been great, amazing content. So much, or thank you so much for being here today, for supporting process serving investigation industry, and also the uh, Serve Now EDU initiative. Uh, as a reminder uh, to the folks that are out there, um, this will be available on servenow.com probably in the next day or so. You'll also be able to find it on uh, YouTube, iTunes, and uh, Joe. Thanks again. We really appreciate it. You're welcome.